Welcome back to The Watch. I'm Oz, that's Shad. What's happening? What's happening? Mm. Silver Surf Her. Ah. Aha. Aha. That's what they're calling. So the casting for The Silver Surfer has mm. been announced for the new Fantastic Four. Now, already the casting for this Fantastic Four film... I was not impressed by specifically because I think Pedro Pascal is like one of the worst castings for Mr. Fantastic that you could imagine. Yeah. 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 Worse yeah. than Oscar Isaac for... Actually, no, he wasn't bad. I mean, they had a layup with uh, the um, office guy. What's his name? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Everyone, Jim. Just Jim. Everyone wants him for, you know... Um, and he was willing to play the role because he appeared as that character in... Uh, in One of the worst Marvel. One of the... Yeah, yeah. Multiverse of Madness, which they unceremoniously butchered as well. Yeah. It's like, Marvel just wants to do things that fans hate. Yeah. Case in point. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing, okay? Comic book characters, comic book fans, right, don't have an issue with female characters. Mm. We've actually loved female characters, even gender bent characters, okay? It's been a staple in comic books to have a female version of a male character all around. But you know what usually happens with them? Mm. These characters weren't to replace them. They were to complement and mm. build. Okay. And then you had awesome female characters that were their own properties. But like you said, Superman, guess what came shortly after? Super, Super lady. Super girl. Okay. Mm. You had Batman. Guess what came shortly after? Bat lady. Bat girl. And then Batwoman as well. There's two, two of them. Okay. But you can see that trend a lot. Like Wolverine. Mm. There's a female gender, but very X32. X but anyway, X32. but the character is actually really cool. I really enjoyed the origin story of that mm. character. Okay. Uh, and they end up being complementary mm. and they build. And guys like women. That's, a, that's an amazing statement these days, isn't it? Guys like women. Guys well, that's, like women. That's racist and transphobic for many right? reasons. Right? I don't know why. But it's the male gaze. Guys like women. Too much. I thought gays didn't like women. Male gay, you're confusing me. I'll show Female you. gays love women. <laughs> Female gays. Exactly. That's the only one where it works in both ways. But male gays <laughs> don't like the male vision of women looking at the visions of different superheroes. Yes. Shut up, Oz. <laughs> okay, so. They go on that, that, you know, yeah, it's not right that men like attractive women, basically. Mm. Uh, all right, so the issue that I, we were talking about is the replacement, okay? Mm. But when you have, like, an original female character that's built on their own, on their own merit, yeah, you've got Wonder Woman, but Alita Battle Angel, and there's so many examples in comics, like, look mm. at the X-Men, okay, Storm, Rogue. Jean. Yeah, Yep, yeah. And uh, female superheroes, guys of love. Mm. All right. It's specifically the replacement mm. that irks us mm. because you have legacy characters that have great stories, okay, great backgrounds, things that fans love and want to see, like, hey, it's going to come to live action. We'd like to see that. Mm. All right. And so come here comes the uh, Fantastic Four upcoming film, right? And they have an opportunity to, uh, you know, adapt it. But the thing is, there's already been a trend of these female characters seeming replacing the um, yeah. male characters. There's a lot of replacement happening these days. Yeah, like, like um, Iron Man, replaced with Iron Heart. Mm. Yeah, yeah. A woman. A woman, a woman. You got uh, um, Hawkeye being, you know, seemingly replaced with the, the female sidekick. A woman. A woman. Uh, you got Black Panther. Oh, well. With... To be fair, I feel like reality... They could have kind of... recast him, though. Well, ca to, but, you know, reality kind of just came along and said, no, you know what? No, they used it as an excuse to push their agenda and put a female in it. When, like, in in, in the 90s that happened, they would have recast him. Actors have passed away in the past, right? And they don't just replace it with a female, like, you know, sidekick. They recast them. To okay. keep the character and franchise going. We'll have to agree to disagree there. Because <laughs> the, the guy died. Like, what else could you do? Man? Recast him! It's not hard! <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> who would they get? Who would you have? Who would you have? Kind of Sam Jackson. Kind of the guy who played Captain America. Or, well, Falcon. Like, like, just an actor that fits the role and plays the same character. Have the character still alive in canon. Yeah. Right? yeah and Chadwick Boseman wanted the character to continue on. <sighs> All right. 
look, rest in peace, that guy. Like, genuinely. He was a great know? actor, and he actually owned the role yeah. brilliantly. But on the plus side, he doesn't have to be in any Marvel movies. There's a lot of characters that seem to be getting replaced. Mm. Okay? Um, Doctor Strange. I want, at the end of his movie, there was a female coming in and, you know... Ant-Man. Uh, and the Wasp. And the Wasp. Well, I don't know, not only was the Wasp getting set to say, the daughter yeah. as well is coming up, right? And... Uh, Captain Marvel coming in to try and basically be the new leader, get rid of Captain America. Captain America has a minority replacement with Falcon, still a man, uh, but they also have, like, you know, that will probably have the other reality, Peggy Parter, Captain America lady, you know, uh, coming in at some point. Uh, <laughs> again, they, they, so we see these replaces. What are you like? I'm just like... I'm just picturing the the catch line for when Peggy Carter comes in. Like, is Marvel ready to get pegged? Has been for the last couple of years. They've been doing it to themselves. Yep. And so, uh, almost par for the course, right? Fantastic Four reboot coming in. And if they, like, announced a, a classic female, uh, you know, character from Marvel, right? That's getting her own film that fans loved... Mm. If they did it right, they would have celebrated. So many people love She-Hulk. Okay, mm, wait, what? The comic book She-Hulk. Oh, thank goodness. Oh. <laughs> but when the live action came around, it was a disaster. Disaster, disaster for everyone involved. <laughs> Let's not go into it though. Uh, I'll concede that one. There you go. <laughs> we went there. Uh, no, but uh, yeah, it's a piece of crap. Absolute. Piece of crap. There's one thing not to play devil's advocate for was that piece of crap. <laughs> I just got what you were referencing. Yeah, yeah. Brand me with a mark of shame for that one. <laughs> Bloody hell. Uh, and again, so if they announced female-led character that heaps of comic book, you know, yeah, fans love, not an issue. It's the replacement thing, mm. the subversion, and clearly... For political reasons. So, Silver Surfer being announced, being cast, and it's a woman. Okay? It's a woman. Trying to justify it because there's a female version of the Silver Surfer in the comics that only appeared in like five issues or something like that. Mm. Okay? It's like, no, no, no. That's not good enough. Silver Surfer as a, is a character, as a backstory, that has done some really integral stuff with the Fantastic Four and everything like that. They're throwing that in the way. And they're probably going to give a lot of his story to her. And the question is why? Uh, there's no answer that is like to make a better story or anything like that. Nothing like that. Okay. It's all down to diversity. Politics. Like, you know, there's already plenty of diversity for your roles and stuff, you would think. Okay. Well, how many women are silver these days? There's not many silver women. There's not. But now that there's one, that's too many. <laughs> Unironically. <sighs> and... Uh, it's like they want, you know, there to be an equal amount. Well, they don't want actually, they want supremacy. They want more female character leads than male character leads. That's what Marvel has been pushing for. That's where the whole MCU comes in, right? Mm -hmm. um, but even if they were, say, just trying to get 50-50, it's, one, it's not going to reflect the canon comic books. They'll say the canon comic books are sexist because not enough women representation. It's like, hang on. You do realise that the heroic protective role usually falls to men, okay? And women like that, okay? Mm. Women have liked comic book male heroes that they kind of are leading the charge as well as the consumer mm. men. I, it's not a bad thing that most, you know, heroic characters are men in comic books. They all say that sex is like, that, I, that's not sexist. That's just a natural result of, you know, gender interests. And mm. I'm not saying it's a bad thing that the most of the main characters in rom-coms are women. Like, most of the main characters in in romance stories are women, mm. okay? And the men play a secondary, you know, role that's basically only there to service the plot, mm. okay? That's perfectly fine. Yeah. Okay? I'm not, like, I'm not complaining about either. Like, people have different interests. And those movies can be great. Yeah. And they have been. Pride and Prejudice is one of the most, like, impressive works of human literature in all, of yeah. all time. Where okay. the Crawdads Sing was a great movie that came out recently. Was mm. a female thing. It was mm. like a thriller sort of movie. Great movie. Right. Jane Austen's uh, wit and understanding of, uh, of the human nature and character is second to none. Mm. Like, 
she has one of the most incredible knacks of writing stupid people ever. Mm. You, you don't need to necessarily watch. Just watch, sorry, read. You don't necessarily need to read. Just watch some of the good live action adaptations, okay? Um, you know, Pride and Prejudice, Sense and Sensibility, the one with Hugh Grant is, is just brilliant, okay? Mm. But, like... Um, Ah, uh, is it Mr. Bingley? But like some of these characters are so obliviously dumb. The the mother in Pride and Prejudice is hilariously oblivious, right? Mm. But the thing, like they're written so well and so real, mm. <laughs> so not real. And when you when you're like, you come across these characters, right? And literally, like, I've known people like that. You think like, and they're and. Very, like, I don't see th these types of characters depicted often in media because I think they're hard to write, but she did it so well. And when you see them, it's like, I, I know several people that would just bang on the money or like mm. that. But anyway, Jane Austen, master, master writer, okay? Mm. Um, and a woman. Uh, and a woman. I, like, right, shocking. But the thing is, though, the fact that most of her theme, like, main characters are women, it's not a, there's not a problem with that. In fact, good. And the fact that most of their leads in superheroes are men, good, okay? And, and also, can we talk about the fact that most content on the internet is, you know, mainly centred around women? Is it? Yes. Because of porn, is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. We denounce us. <laughs> <laughs> so, if people are having an issue with it, right, this is the, the underpinnings, reasons why, but it was also... A red flag. Mm. Now, interesting. There's been a um, trailer release, right, where it has a female lead, and it wasn't a red flag because of the context. What was it? Fallout. Oh, yeah. Fallout trailer dropped, okay? And the fact is, in the Fallout game, you can pick a male or female main character. Mm. And so the fact that they went with a female lead, no one has seen as a red flag. I'm starting to hear rumours that... <laughs> It's coming out soon. We're going to review it. We'll, we'll see, right? In fact, the review might already be out, depending where this one comes oh. out. So you might already know the, the truth, if it's good or bad, because yeah. it might have been a red flag. It shouldn't have been, because it shouldn't have mattered that if, you know, the main character is a female in Fallout, because it, it's based on a role-playing game. Mm. It's when they're specifically changing or replacing a male character with a female. It's like, hmm, there's a red flag, right? Mm. But if Fallout does end up being bad... It will kind of reveal the answer why they so clearly went with the female lead over the male one. But if it is bad, could you just imagine the fallout? <laughs> it's not your best one. Can can we add the but after? It's up to the editor. Okay, I'll please, add him. One. please, Nathan. <laughs> Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. <laughs> All right, and so gamers are like, sorry, not gamers are fans are reacting with the scepticism because this is clearly a red flag moment. Mm. Could it, would it affect? I mean, you could have a female silver servant and have a great, you know, um, uh, adaptation, everything like that. The trend is, is when the studios do stuff like this, they are prioritizing the message and mm. activism over storytelling, and they will subvert certain character traits in lieu of a more progressive thing, like yeah. what they did with Gladriel. Gladriel was a classic feminine, feminine character with feminine traits and everything like that. But because gotta push it, because people have been trying to say that Rings of Power is just bad, not woke. And it's like, have you seen what they did to Gladriel? Made her the most like uh, girl boss, butchy, Mary Sue. And they literally said, we're gonna fill her with piss and vinegar, right? This is a, a, a more violent Gladriel and everything because they had an issue with her feminine character. Right? Yeah, whereas in the Peter Jackson stuff, she didn't even need to touch a sword. She didn't need to lower mm -hmm. herself to that. She could just enter a room and bam, hit him with the mm -hmm. good or evil queen if she wanted to. You yeah. know? And some people have been, even been trying to say that, like, if Lord of the Rings came out today, people like us would be complaining about it because of our, uh, like, like, you know, Arwen or, uh, or Eowyn moments and stuff like, no. And, and you know what destroys that? Those retarded you know, like claims that we, people would be against Rings of Power. Sorry, Lord of the Rings came out today. In fact, it happened before. Like, House of the Dragon. Arcane. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, exactly. Arcane. Friggin' awesome shows, mm. right? Arcane has a pretty clearly, you know, um, implied lesbian female lead character in it. Okay? I think it's like, like... Literally, like they—they're coming on to each other, right? Yeah. They got the, the two female characters definitely have the hots for each other, right? 
great friggin' show. Mm. Love Dark Hang, one of my favourite, all right? Mm. And uh, the, the, there's such a big distinction and difference between what they did with Rings of Power and Lord of the Rings. With Rings of Power, they specifically were trying to masculinise Gladiel for what was obvious agenda activist reasons. Yeah. Okay? With Lord of the Rings, they were trying to adapt the source material accurately. Okay? Uh, that's... Eowyn takes down the Lich King in the book. Friggin' go. Mm. Awesome. And the straw man that, you know, people that are pushing back against this woke ideology would complain about Lord of the Rings that came out today is one of the most pathetic straw mans and accusations I could imagine. The right? fact that she it, takes it, it, it shows blatant and willful ignorance to try and vilify the opposing side without understanding what we've been saying. They're mm. actively trying to... Um, uh, misrepresent and vilify because they agree with that level of activism. That's the impression I get, okay, mm. when they try and cope like that. And here, case in point, all right? Now, this could be good, okay, with the female lead, but the trend, that the, the pattern of behaviour is seen is whenever they do a change like this for activist reasons leads to a dog crap show that is poor writing because they're prioritizing activism over writing as well as being flooded with the message where the male characters not only get sidelined get denigrated and belittled and they literally break reality to make sure there's no toxic masculinity like in the wheel of time adaptation mm. where they were so uh, like afraid of a man saving a woman they had a female character teleport out of a chair Okay, yeah. to prevent a male character saving her. Like it go, they're they're that level of activists that they cannot allow. And that's how far gone they are. And so the Wheel of Time live action adaptation was just bastardized and ruined. Mm. The main characters in Wheel of Time are three guys, and they are heroes, and they're saving the women. And what they did at the end of season two was a friggin' tra like travesty. I didn't watch it. Oh, well, I'm, just dodged a bullet, man. It was like. They had not only, so Rand, you know, saves um, Egwene and Nynaeve essentially. When, so oh, yeah, book in, two, yeah. And then yeah. he fights in the, they cut the fight in the clouds and they have Rand get saved three times by the female characters in a row. It was like, not only did they not want Rand, the man saving the women, they needed the women to save the men three times times he is such a pathetic wet rag and he's supposed to be the savior of the world and he can't save himself and he is pathetic and weak and they have ruined wheel of time in the adaptation because of clear and overt activism yeah. okay this is the explicit feminist message that rafe judkins declared at the beginning that he was going to inject in his adaptation. Yeah. He was overt about that. And then you have people trying to say, it's not activism, it's not work, it's just bad writing. It's like, wake up! They have said and admitted that they are making these changes for the sake of their agenda and politics. Mm -hmm. Rafe Judkins has been on record about that. Amazon literally has a checkbox list of how many people and representation they need in their properties. Yeah. But Rings of Power isn't woke, guys. Fantastic Four. It's not woke, guys. It's they not. just want to have a, a female silver surfer, even though they literally have tech, checklists that are based on DEI. Mm. All right? Um, uh, and so the gaslighting is extreme when, when people try and defend and cope about this stuff. And this is why people are concerned about it. And... Uh, they might, they might end up being good. We'll judge it on its merits, as we always do when it comes out. Mm. And if something is good, like House of the Dragon. Yep, where the crawdads sing. Dungeons and Dragons. I really enjoyed the Dungeons and Dragons film recently. Mm. Um, as well as Arcane. Mm. Okay. We acknowledge good writing when it's there. Mm. So when it comes, like, obviously men more... Uh, uh, what, what's the word? Conservative leaning. Mm. We're more progressive. Most dudes wouldn't like to hear this, right? But do you think as far as Silver Surfer goes, you know, woman would be on board? All right. <laughs> that wasn't your best one. Was that was awful. <laughs> that was terrible. Uh, so this is uh, an article from That Park Place, and this is what Bob Iger has said recently and it's just very... So after Bob Iger claims Disney does not advance any kind of agenda, okay, the casting of the female actor to play the gender-swap Silver Server in Marvel's Fantastic Four film drops. 
But they're, they they don't, they're not activists, they're not a, a agenda, they're not pushing a certain thing. And this is why people, they'll try and say, like, nothing's going on, it's just a female, or what, what's, what's the issue? It wouldn't be an issue if there wasn't a track record of this being a red flag in mm. the past. And also, to raise the, the actual question, why? You have a male character, you've gotten rid of him, who has this backstory that is brilliant, that fans want to see, why are you getting rid of that and replacing mm. it? What irks me isn't so much the race swap because I really um, I'm not too invested in him. Mm. What irks me is the lies, like the just bold faced lies. You know, I mm -hmm. can't stand it. Yeah, yeah. And well, Bob Iger goes on to spread one of those lies. Right, our job is to entertain first and foremost, and by telling great stories, we continue to have a positive impact on the world and inspire future generations, as we've done for over a hundred years. Now, that is already a very slimy, weaselly comment, okay? Trying to compare what they're doing now with the same as what they did for the past hundred years. No, 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 no. <laughs> like, you had past great films, mm. great films in the past that celebrated, you know, uh, traditional virtues. Like, I love the original um, mm. Sleeping Beauty, mm. right? Is it Prince Philip? I think it's Prince Philip. The one he died. kills a dragon. Oh. And it freaking kills a dragon, man. I haven't seen, I haven't seen it. it. It's actually a classic. But do you know what they did to that prince in the Maleficent remake? What they did. Made him a friggin' joke. An absolute clown, right? Aware they can't have a man save a woman. Oh, that's sexist now. And so... But, oh, what? They're doing the same thing. No, they're not doing the same thing as what they did. And you can see clearly by these woke remakes and what mm. they're pu pushing out now. All right? And then he goes on to say... Disney has always been and will continue to be a source of hope, joy, and optimism for all people of all ages, right? It's like, except if you're a Christian conservative or a straight white man, of course. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. And then he goes, and this is, this is a big bit of bull crap. We are committed to telling stories that reflect the world around us, reflect his world, his bubble, mm -hmm. the woke world, right? All right? Because do you know a lot of like, like, like this uh, LGBT push, like, like isn't actually represented a lot in the world. Like, for instance, trans... Like, if you look at the rate of, I guess, um, either... Is it um, non-binary or trans... Non-traditional gender. Or bi. There's a way, way higher percentage in, within Hollywood mm. than in, like, the rest of the world. Yeah, yeah. Odd that. Yeah. But they want to reflect a certain world, Oz. Their world. Their world. Their world. Um... And so they want to reflect the world around us, using those stories to entertain stories from all works of life, he asserted. And then he says, we believe we have a responsibility to do good in the world. There's the activism. When he says our job is to entertain foremost and he's tried to say, well, we're going to get, get out of politics. Bull crap. Because when he says we have a responsibility to do good in the world and we're going to continue to do good, that means they're going to continue to do good as they see it, which is their politics. Stuff, yeah. They will continue to do the woke stuff as proven by the casting of the Silver Surfer, mm. okay? Instead of actually, why don't you actually make one of the female-led superhero properties that Marvel has a huge love instead of either changing, replacing, subverting, all that stuff. But no, they, do, they want to change because, shockingly enough, some of the most popular characters and properties happen to be the male characters. Yeah. Wonder why. Is it because, like... Male heroism has a, there's there might be a link towards the male you know masculine identity to provide and protect that both men and women love and want to celebrate and promote and enjoy stories that have that in it. I think it's because we, us bros are pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We fight, build stuff. They have an issue with the fact that most of the most popular heroes are male-led heroes, right? Mm. And so instead of trying to make a really great popular female one, they know they've got to replace the popular ones, which just ends up ruining it. It it alienates the current fans and the current female fans because they liked it like that mm. and doesn't attract anyone new. Mm. And then he goes on to say, but we know our job is to not advance any kind of agenda. Right after he says, we believe our responsibility doing good, right? Their agenda is what they think is good. And yeah. that, that's the responsibility that they're going to be pushing. And so this is complete bullcrap. Like, when he says they're not advancing agenda, nonsense. Disney is one of the most activist-ridden, agenda-driven organizations on the planet. And uh, and so, and, and Iger is the one pushing it, okay? He's at the forefront of this stuff. How is he still in charge? Why, why hasn't a woman taken his place? 
<laughs> well, they recently had a vote on the board, mm. and the propaganda Disney threw out to try and um, reinforce their position on the board was next level. It was it was quite amazing. But I'm glad he got re-elected because Disney is going to continue to destroy itself. Now, of course, we'll always judge um, the next Fantastic Four on its own merits, but there mm. are red flags already, and already fans are disappointed. It's like, hang on, we like the Silver Surfer, wanted to, the classic story of who this character has done right, mm. okay? Um, but said, it might be good, we'll judge it on its own merits, there's just things that indicate that's not going to be the case and is not changing at all. Mm. What do you think of the early 2000s Fantastic? Average to bad. I honestly... I mean, yeah, they're bad, but they got some charm to them. Yeah, yeah, there's, some, there's some quirky charm to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the Invisible Woman. Oh, yeah, Jessica Alba. <laughs> <laughs> Stay on watch.